So education has always been important uh, for us. Uh, two years after independence in 1823, uh, the government was declared, was declared responsible for the education of the people. Uh, ten years later, in 1833, uh, this is important because it, it signals a tendency, a permanent tendency. Um, education was made available to girls in 1883, while in 1840, an intellectual movement declared that they, girls, had the right to education in order to improve their condition and achieve the progress of society as a whole. Uh, and the, the 1847 Constitution ordered, because till then girls learned some things and boys other things, but since 1847 the Constitution established that um, uh, both uh, genders should have uniform education. So the same education for both uh, boys and girls since, since 1847. That's over 150 years ago. And uh, in 1869, also more than 150 years ago, elementary school was declared free, obligatory, and financed by the state for all social classes and for both boys and girls. Uh, so this is to say that we have always recognized uh, the importance of education as a means to uh, personal, family, and, and national progress and prosperity. Then I'll mention about economy. Our economy has evolved throughout the years from a very basic economy. Coffee was, since the early 1840s, uh, the main product, the first uh, export product we produced in Costa Rica in the 1840s. And uh, historically, the basis of our economy and that uh, was true for a little bit over 100 years, I would say till um, the 1950s. From the 1840s to 1950s, coffee, of which we are still very proud, we are very happy, and by the way, so coffee was, uh, as I said before, our first uh, export product, and um, the, the basis of Costa Rican economy for over 100 years. Um, now, it's less significant economically. Agriculture makes up for only 10% of our exports, and coffee is in the third position after pineapple, of which we are the largest world exporter, and bananas, of which we are the second largest world exporter after Ecuador. Uh, so coffee is our third uh, agricultural export product. Now our economy depends mainly on um, uh, technological products and services. When I say te technological products, I'm talking mainly about, uh, this is coffee, see, and plantations of, of coffee in the previous uh, uh, picture, coffee. And, uh, but now, uh, we export a lot of uh, medical equipment, uh, microchips, that kind of things. Thanks mainly to the fact that uh, uh, several hundred of uh, foreign companies, not Korean by the way, uh, mostly American, a couple Japanese I would say, and uh, some European uh, companies uh, have uh, installed their production uh, uh, centers in Costa Rica. Um, the country has been able to prepare uh, its uh, human resources, um, to uh, work in very specialized areas with added values. Uh, I like to say that we don't offer the possibility to uh, foreign investors of finding their cheap labor because we decided not to uh, try to develop the country on the basis of the poverty of the people. So we are looking for uh, investments of uh, high level that require added value, and we struggle to prepare the, the people, the human resources, that that kind of uh, activities require. So when, unfortunately, many countries, even in our region, uh, are talking about uh, the benefit of cheap labor for foreign investors, I, I, I don't feel good about that. 
And uh, I always try to stress the importance of uh, uh, high level investments. And we know about the importance of preparing human resources for that purpose. Um, I'll say that um, Costa Rica's economy has developed during the last uh, 12 years, mostly, uh, at a pace of 4% per year, which is not enough. Much better than many other countries, but it's not enough. And um, uh, we are very interested in, uh, in eliminating poverty in the country, which is still very high. 20% of the Costa Rican population, that's one out of each five people, uh, lives under the line of poverty. And that's a serious problem which uh, we really want to solve. And uh, uh, I hope we, we can do it in the uh, short term. Um, nature to Costa Ricans is very important. We boast about being a green country. So, um, and I'll tell you a few facts about that. Uh, Costa Rica is the only country in the world which has, in the last 20 years, increased, not reduced, but increased its uh, forest uh, coverage. We have more forests now than we did uh, 20 years ago. And uh, so the country is, is uh, very, work, it works hard in order to, to keep uh, nature. 28% percent of the national territory is under some kind of protection. National parks, uh, biological reserves, whatever. 28%, more, more than one-fourth of our national territory is under some kind of protection. In Costa Rica, we uh, don't have, because it's legally established, it's forbidden to have, uh, for instance, open mining. Uh, there's a few, there were a few uh, golden mines in Costa Rica, they, they cannot be uh, exploited now because law, law prohibits open mining uh, in order to protect the, the ecological system. Um, oil exploration uh, requires, if uh, we wanted to, to do it, it requires a special law. And uh, I'll say that 95% uh, of our energy is of uh, a clean origin. That is, it comes from hydro, water, uh, eolic, uh, wind, uh, solar, the sun. That's ma mainly uh, the 95% the of, our, of our national energy uh, comes from uh, source, clean sources. Um, most oil imports are required for transportation. That's mainly the use of uh, oil imports. And um, the country has uh, committed itself to become CO2 neutral in 2021 to celebrate 200 years of independence. Um, and I think that we are uh, working toward that goal um, at a very good pace. So if we achieve that, Costa Rica would be the first country in the world to ever be declared uh, CO2 neutral. So, uh, as I said before, as you can understand, we are very uh, proud of our uh, nature. We have decided tourism is important for us. Uh, last year we received over 2,200,000 uh, tourists. That's almost half our population. That would be as if uh, Korea received 25 million tourists per year. And uh, mainly we try to attract what we call eco-tourists and adventure tourists, uh, differently from other places uh, which uh, uh, try to develop their tourism on the basis of casinos and that kind of things. We are interested in this kind of tourism. Uh, eco-tourism and adventure tourism are very important for us. You've seen a lot of beaches, so, uh, but we have beautiful beaches, really. And uh, volcanoes, we have a lot of them, several of them active, as you will now see. This is a, a, lag a lagoon in one of our, in the crater of one of our volcanoes. Uh, this is a volcano uh, at night, lava you call it in English? 
lava, this uh, mud, okay, lava coming out, so you can see it, it's uh, uh, in, 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 at night time it illuminates the, the, the horizon. Uh, we have uh, humid, dry, dry, humid, and rainy uh, forests uh, in different areas of the country, and we try to keep them, as I said before. And now I'm going to talk briefly about Costa Rica and Korea. Uh, we established um, uh, diplomatic relations in 1962, two years ago, to celebrate uh, our 50, the 50th, uh, 50th anniversary of our diplomatic relations. Our then president, Laura Chinchilla, came to Korea. Uh, then president, Lim Yun Bak, <coughs> received her, and we had a very, we organized a very successful visit, of which we are very proud. Um, so this is to say that uh, Costa Rica and Korea, fortunately, have excellent uh, diplomatic and friendly relations. Uh, there's about 50 Costa Ricans here, more, most of them students, a few of them working as uh, English teachers or the like. There's last uh, figure we have, 550 Koreans in Costa Rica uh, who live there on a permanent basis. Uh, all of them have developed uh, their own uh, businesses. And um, uh, in spite of such a, a, a small Korean population, I don't know how they survive, but they survive and they're doing quite well. We have four Korean restaurants in San Jose. Uh, and some of them, two of them at least that I know of, are very large restaurants. I want to mention just uh, to mention similarities between four personalities, uh, two of each country, uh, that uh, I would say Costa Rica and Korea share. Uh, former President uh, Kim, uh, Nobel Peace Prize winner. By the way, we have, I'm not mentioning him now, but we have a, a former president who's a Nobel Prize winner also. Uh, President Kim Jong-de uh, received the Nobel Peace Prize uh, in recognition of his efforts uh, to establish a, a peaceful coexistence in the peninsula, in the Korean Peninsula. And uh, uh, in our case, Jose Figueres, we call him the uh, father of the modern uh, democracy in Costa Rica. In 1948, he abolished the army, and uh, he made large contributions to peace in the Central American region also. Um, and then we have two personalities, living uh, persons, who have um, gained international prestige. A distinguished Korean, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, whom we all know, uh, Personally, I had the honor of meeting him and uh, sustaining a brief conversation with him um, a little bit over a year ago when he visited Korea and went to the National Assembly. To the National Assembly. Uh, I'm proud to say that about two months ago, he paid an official visit to Costa Rica as Secretary General of the UN. And after the official visit was over, he stayed in Costa Rica privately for vacation during three days. That made me happy because I think he, he liked the country, or had good reports about the country because he decided to stay there. But uh, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, he has uh, given Korea great honor and prestige uh, all over the world. And we have uh, a Costa Rican who has done more or the same uh, for us, Franklin Chang Diaz. By the way, his paternal grandfather was Chinese, a Chinese uh, immigrant in Costa Rica, his father of his father. Franklin Chan was the first Costa Rican astronaut ever. Uh, he has a record of uh, record he shares with an American astronaut, um, a record of seven space uh, missions. Uh, only two people have uh, reached that many uh, space uh, missions and uh, Right now, he's the president of a company which is developing, developing a 
plasma engine um, designed to um, make uh, space uh, traveling cheaper and faster. And uh, apparently he's been very successful in that. He's a recognized scientist, a member of the Hall of Fame at the NASA. And uh, so he has given uh, honor and prestige to Costa Rica as Mr. Ban Ki-moon has done for, for um, uh, Korea. If there's any questions, uh, I would love to uh, try to answer them. Uh, after repeating my thanks to you all for your kind attention and your great patience. Um, I hope you know now a little bit more about Costa Rica than you did, and um, at least I hope that um, our conversation could uh, get you interested in learning more about my country, which is a very nice, good country. Uh, I'm open to questions. if. There are any? Ah, um, thank you for your insightful presentations. I really enjoy it and learn a lot about Costa Rica from your presentations. Um, I just want to go back to what, what you were saying about the uniqueness of Costa Rica in terms of the presence of democracy and freedom. So as I know that um, many Latin American countries still struggling to achieve like democracy and still unstable politically. So, yeah, but unlike any other Latin American country, you already mentioned that the Costa Rica has successfully achieved like the stable political setting and established like democratic government. So do you think the, what is the biggest difference between Costa Rica and any other country? And what made Costa Rica uh, more advanced country in Latin America. Thank you. Uh, probably, my personal ideas. Uh, first of all, I mentioned before the fact that uh, our first head of state was a school teacher and then a general. We never had, even we, when we had an army, uh, military was not uh, a very strong uh, sector of society. Um, that helped us to abolish the army without any uh, harsh reaction from interested uh, parts. Um, isolation, I would say, uh, is another factor. Uh, Costa Rica was the last country in the Central American province. Um, it's Guatemala, way up north, and that's where the capital of Central America was during the colonial period. And uh, so we were way uh, down there, isolated, very poor. Uh, the country was baptized by, you know who Christopher Columbus was? Hmm? Okay. Uh, by the way, our national currency, our uh, money is called Colon. That's Columbus in Spanish, Cristobal Colon, Christopher Columbus. He himself, in his fourth and last uh, uh, voyage, he arrived in Costa Rica and he baptized the country by, because he was wrong. He saw Indians with uh, golden ornaments and he thought, this is a rich coast. That's what Costa Rica means, rich coast. Uh, and he was wrong in two counts. Our indigenous population, which meant free labor uh, for the uh, colonialists, uh, indigenous population in Costa Rica was very small. These uh, people he saw were traveling from south to north and gold was not as abundant either. These people were wearing golden ornaments which they brought from the south, presumably Peru, and they were going north. So Christopher Columbus was wrong. He called us Costa Rica because he thought that we had a large Indian population and lots of gold. But the country was very poor. The Spanish governor, he had to, this is a historical fact, he had to uh, grow up his own vegetables in his yard because he had no uh, servants and less of all slaves. 
to produce. So the community was very democratic in that respect. Everybody had to, to work. We were all very poor. And I think that that kind of isolation and the uh, cultural practices that uh, common lackness of uh, riches, richness um, enforced, enforced on, on the inhabitants of the country made us um, uh, believers in democracy and equality among people. Um, and then the fact that we abolished the army. That's, um, I think that, and people really believe in, in, in uh, exercising freedom and democratic principles. People are very, and with the passing of the years, people grow more and more proud, prouder. They grow prouder of their system and they, uh, of their differences with other countries. And uh, so uh, everybody uh, works hard in order to uh, preserve and strengthen and perfection our democratic system. So thank you again for your patience and your kindness. Thank you again to Hassan Institute and EBS. Uh, it's been, for me, a unique opportunity to uh, talk about my country, Costa Rica, to distinguished Koreans. And by the way, we are great admirers of your country. Thank you so much.